We all spend a lot of time thinking of ways to entertain ourselves, and sometimes it's tough. Think about it. How many times have you said to yourself, I'm bored. I've got nothing to do today. And if it's tough today, what was it like for kids almost 50 years ago in 1950? Growing up in rural Georgia in a county like Heard County, how did 13-year-old kids entertain themselves back then? Heard County in rural West Georgia. And this is what Franklin, the county seat, looked like in the early 50s when Jane Adamson Pike was 13 years old. It was real slow and laid back in Heard County in the early 1950s. There was not a whole lot of people didn't have automobiles even then, not the people that I knew. And we didn't have any McDonald's. Would you believe we existed without McDonald's? <laughs> no fast food, no movie theaters, no TV or computers or video games. Picnics were one place for people to meet and talk and have fun, and so was church. If you went to church and you asked a family to come home with you for lunch, they did. The preacher would come home and have lunch with us, and, and that was something I always hated when the preacher came because he got to eat lunch first. And the adults ate lunch first while the kids waited. And I always said that I never knew a chicken had anything but a wing. <laughs> so, because um, they got the best parts of the chicken while we sat out and, and waited for them to finish eating. Most of the people who lived in Heard County back then were farmers, and there was plenty of work to do, but there was always time to enjoy the local swimming hole. Well, mostly in the afternoon, being in the country like you had chores to do. Not really take up all the afternoon, but now on our farm, which was about three miles from my home, we, have a, we had what we call a swimming hole. The whole community went swimming there. And we had a large tree that we uh, hang a rope from. You swing out and dive off in the creek. All these kids have grown up, but when they were your age, about 13 years old, the most interesting thing in their lives was people, their family and friends, and an occasional eccentric, somebody in the town who was strange or interesting. We used to like to go by Mahalia Lancaster's place and watch her. She was supposed to be the fortune teller in our area, and people really flocked to her place. And since she passed away, we went to her grave one time just to see, I wanted to see what was on the tombstone. And there was money, change, laying all over her tombstone. And I asked one of the neighbors, ladies, why did, uh, why did she think that change were there? They said, some of the people put it there thinking that they can appease to her spirit. Back then, the early 1950s, kids didn't meet at the mall or go to movies together or hang out at the local video arcade. School was the biggest part of a kid's social life, especially school parties. We had a lot of parties, had a lot of parties at school. And I can remember spinning the ball, walking around, walking around the schoolhouse at night with the young girls at that age. It was a really, really exciting time. The boys and girls would walk together. You'd have a, des a designated place like you might be walk out of uh, the driveway or something in back. And sometimes you held hands with them. Uh, and uh, sometimes uh, it might be a boy that you didn't want to hold hands with, <laughs> so <laughs> you just walk beside all of them. <laughs> so. Ah, and when boys and girls kiss and hold hands, there has to be music. And there was. A lot more kids played musical instruments a generation ago, and they also loved to listen to the radio. Back then, radio was what TV is today. Dead. One of my favorite things was listening to the radio, especially Saturday night when the Grand Ole Opry came on. I'd always get the radio, and not always, but most of the time put the radio by my bed and listen to the Grand Ole Opry until it went off, because I love country music. I can still hear her sing Now, reading was a big part of my life when I was growing up. I would tell my son now a lot of times that sometimes I would read a couple of books or maybe three books in a week of, of two or three hundred pages, and he just thinks that's unreal. We may never get to travel very much in this world if we don't have a lot of money, but if we are a 
reader that loves to read. We can go anywhere. Spending time alone was not unusual for country kids. Some would read, others would learn to work with their hands to build things they could enjoy. Because of my nature, I've always been building and doing and constructing things. And uh, all my life, I just couldn't wait to get opportunity to, to do, build something else. So if I wasn't playing sports or basketball, I was actually constructing uh, what you call truck wagons or uh, building small houses. And uh, I have a picture of a Ferris wheel that I constructed about 20 feet high when I was in this eighth grade. And uh, one day all the school came and all the kids came down and rode on the Ferris wheel. And in the spring, one of the great events of the year was the annual field day and picnic. We looked forward to the end of school because everybody got to go on a picnic. And this was just a, a day of, of fun. We had sack races, uh, relay races, and, and so forth that day. And I always remember the field day. We had the three-legged race, sack race, all kind of high jump, broad jump. But the main thing was then being able to go barefoot. May the 1st was a magic day at my home. Mother would not let us go without our shoes to May the 1st. And man, I looked forward to that more than anything in the world for them. It was a very different time, the early 1950s, especially in rural Georgia. You couldn't buy entertainment. You couldn't just turn something on, a TV, a stereo, a VCR, a video game. Mostly, kids had to rely on their imaginations and each other. I was talking to somebody the other day about being uh, a young person or a teenager in the early 50s, and I believe it was one of the best times to live. We had enough freedom that we weren't watched continuously, but we didn't have so much freedom that we got into a lot of trouble. I think I was very, very fortunate to be raised in Heard County, the teachers that I had, and the opportunity I was given, and the values I was taught. I wouldn't take anything for them.